Hey, this video is going to be looking at IP addresses, really introducing them because depending on what course you're doing, the next few videos will be on IP addresses potentially. I know I have talked about them before in previous previous networking videos, which you may have watched. It's impossible to kind of completely separate the terms because terms like IP addresses really permeate the entire networking topic. But we're going to be looking at them in more detail from now on, including in comparison with another type of really important address, the MAC address. So I want to make sure that this distinction is really clear because it's such a common misconception between you know which which of them is needed, what they do, and so on. So let's try and clear that up straight away. First of all, by defining what a MAC address is. So MAC stands for Media Access Control. Media here meaning the transmission medium, so like the air or a wire. And this is a identifier which is hard coded into a device called a network adapter, also called a network interface card. All devices need a network adapter to be able to work with a network and that means they're each going to have a MAC address which is assigned when it's made in the factory so the person who manufactures this will just assign a MAC address to it and it's meant to be unique worldwide. I say meant to because it's very difficult to completely control you know a factory could be a bit dodgy and they could not necessarily be adhering to certain standards that make it unique but it works because they are unique enough to be uh, usable. And they're hard-coded, which means they're actually stored on a bit of memory here. You're not really ever going to change it. It is possible to spoof a MAC address, so you can make it look like your MAC address is different to what it actually is. So from a security point of view, you can't necessarily trust MAC addresses because they can be spoofed. They can be faked, essentially. They contrast with IP addresses because an IP address is assigned to a device that's connected to a network which is running the Internet Protocol, which is what IP stands for. So you have to be running this specific protocol to get an IP address, whereas a MAC address isn't connected to a protocol, just every device that has a network adapter is going to have one. But to get an IP address you have to actually be running the internet protocol, which almost all networks are, but not every network is running this. And whereas a MAC address is meant to be unique worldwide, an IP address only needs to be unique to the network in question. So this network could be very small, it could only have 10 devices on it, and so the IP address assigned to each device on that network has to be unique but it's not difficult to make it unique with only 10 devices. Clearly with the internet, which is worldwide, which runs the internet protocol, funnily enough, we want to make it unique and that's obviously a bigger challenge. And there are certain technologies we'll look at in future videos which kind of lessen the requirement to be unique, but we'll talk about that in another video. It might be useful to think of the MAC address as being the physical address, whereas the IP address is more logical because it comes and goes the IP address, whereas a MAC address is there permanently. Unless you get rid of your interface card, it's not going to go. Whereas the IP address is dependent on some software or dependent on your connection to the network. So it's, it's, less, def it's less definite than a MAC address. Really crucially, an IP address gives us information about a device's geographical location. So a router can use the IP address to figure out where to actually send the data. So for example, if you're sending data from America to the UK, it can first of all see that the IP address of the destination is in the UK so it can send it under the sea to a UK router the UK router can then see that okay this IP address belongs to Sky the internet service provider and so it can narrow down the search that way whereas a MAC address doesn't give us any actual location information because as I say it's, it's assigned in the factory it's sent out, it's shipped around the world who knows where they end up, no one's keeping track of where a certain MAC address ends up. So it doesn't tell us where in the world it is. Whereas an IP address, because it's logically defined, gives us more information. To try and give an analogy to this, if we have a letter representing a data packet, and we have a postman who's going to deliver it, representing a router, and we have a person in the head office who's the person who's meant to receive the letter, well, the postman is going to use the address information to work out where this office is in the country and then if the letter can be given to that local distribution centre, then it can be given to the local postman who's going to actually deliver it to this office. But once it gets to the office, so the postman is not going to deliver it personally to John Smith, it's going to arrive in reception, and at reception they're then going to take the letter and give it to John Smith, who is an employee at this office. So the IP address in blue is what's used to get the data to that rough location, so that local network, and then the MAC address kicks in and is used to actually get it to the correct device in that network. 
I know this example breaks down a bit because John Smith is not a unique identifier, but assuming it's unique in the office, they, they know the correct person to actually deliver this to. So for example, in a wireless network, a router is trying to send data to an iPad, for instance, and what it will do in the packet it sends out, it will put the iPad's MAC address in the packet as the destination. And so every device in the network will receive that packet because it's just in the air, you can't target one device. But only the iPad will actually accept the packet because it will see that its MAC address matches up with the MAC address in the packet. So that's how it distinguishes between devices. It's a way to actually, it's a way for your device to know that the packet you're receiving is actually meant for you. When teaching this topic, a very common question is, why do we need both? Which is a good question because if we have a unique IP address, we don't seem to need to have a MAC address or vice versa. And the main answer is that they both operate at different layers in the network model. So internet protocol is a network layer protocol and MAC isn't a protocol. I've just put this as shorthand, but the MAC address works at the link layer. So the layer below the network layer. We've talked about how you can switch out a protocol without affecting the other layers, which adds a really nice layer of flexibility. Or if we weren't using the internet protocol, if we use an alternative or weren't using it at all, we would still need to have a MAC address. So the MAC address would still be needed to do this comparison, as I, as I explained with the example to do with Wi-Fi. We need to know when a packet is meant for us. And if we weren't using an IP address, we need to have some address to do it. So it's important to have a MAC address, which is it's important to have a address that's always going to be there. This GIF from practicalnetworking.net shows quite nicely how the MAC address is switched out at each hop in the routing process. So you can see as as it moves through from one network to another, the packet is updated with the MAC address of the next hop because this device needs to be able to know that this packet is meant for it because there'll be other devices on this network. Whereas the IP address doesn't really need to change as we go through. So you do convert from IP addresses to MAC addresses using protocols because here we need to be able to use the IP address to convert to the MAC address. And depending on what version of IP you're using, so ARP is a protocol called Address Resolution Protocol, which is running, which it works with IP version 4. NDP stands for Neighbor Discovery Protocol, this works for IP version 6. You don't need to, need, you, you don't need to know that necessarily, but it's useful to know that they are used in tandem and we do convert between them. Just to finish, I want to say that IP addresses don't actually identify a specific device, even if I've sort of alluded to that. Instead, what they do, they're identifying the connection between a device and a network. So we've got a router here, which has got two network adapters, two interface cards, ETH0 and ETH1. It's connected to two networks, A and B, each with different a different IP address. And really, the IP address is brought in once we have a connection between the device and the network. So this goes back to the sort of impermanence of an IP address. As soon as network A goes down, the IP address, which is assigned to ETH0, which is 100.1.72.2, this goes down. But whereas a MAC address, which is connected to ETH0, doesn't ever go away. Even if you are offline, you still have a MAC address. Whereas your IP address is only brought in once you connect from your device to the network. So here, this router has got two network connections, and so has two IP addresses. And a router needs to have at least two connections, otherwise it can't forward data onwards.